So um, let's talk about, this is kind of the, the, the last um, uh, focus area um, under professionalism. Uh, CLEAR and ACGME really wants to focus on these areas of honesty, integrity, and mistreatment. Um, they place quite a bit of emphasis on the ethical use of um, the electronic health record. Um, along those lines, we want to talk about our professional code of conduct um, and any education in conflict of interest declaration. And um, and in addressing professionalism, our, our patients have the opportunity um, to let us know how we're doing um, in terms of their expectations of professional care. So um, Crucial Conversations is a very interactive program. It's 16 hours um, and it involves uh, education of our residents and fellows and nurse managers and hospital staff. Um, and basically this, this training is, um, um, is devised to address those high risk situations where, um, where maintaining a degree of calm um, is going to be important. Uh, when there may be some emotional triggers during these high-risk um, events. And, and the goal is to, um, to clarify um, and the communication um, so that the right things happen for the interest of patient safety. Um, you have a Chief's Resident Council, and each one of your um, programs have a representation on that council. Um, please use um, um, your counsel um, as a liaison to any concerns that you might have. Um, and uh, they meet on a monthly basis and they, they also uh, disseminate quite a bit of information from, uh, from our uh, ACGME office. Under professionalism remediation, so there may be um, uh, unfortunate instance, instances uh, where there may be some lapses of professionalism. Um, uh, and so we do have a remediation process that, uh, that assists our residents um, through, that, uh, through that process. Um, CLEAR focuses, of course, on uh, scientific integrity. Um, so in your research, in your scientific endeavors, whether it be quality improvement or clinical research, um, just an emphasis on, uh, um, you know, there should be insulation uh, from any bias or fabrication, plagiarism. Um, and so uh, just uh, be cognizant of, of the ethical um, uh, approaches uh, with regard to scientific integrity. And financial conflicts of interest. Um, so they really would like us to, to educate you all on the uh, the conflicts of interest uh, in medicine. And this kind of goes both ways. Um, as, as an attending physician, as um, if, if we have any stock ownership or if we do any consulting or have any intellectual property and we are um, training residents to, uh, uh, in, in this realm, um, we should disclose to our residents that we have uh, some degree of financial conflict of interest, um, whether that be at the beginning of a rotation or perhaps an attending is giving, um, uh, giving a, 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 a grand rounds presentation or a presentation in general, um, they should disclose whether or not they have a financial conflict of interest. And so just in contrast, there are uh, non-financial conflicts of interest uh, so that you know what they are. There are academic conflicts of interest. Uh, there are conflicts of conscience and there's personal conflicts of interest as well. So EHR copy and paste. Okay, so CLEAR and ACGME are really big on this and, and, and there's a good reason why. Um, you know, I think historically, uh, perhaps we have used um, the copying and pasting. We've gone in, 
um, as a resident, we've looked at a medical student's note and we've kind of copied and pasted and moved it forward to the next day. And they really um, do frown upon this um, because inaccurate information can be propagated throughout that record um, year over year. And so it can really cloud the judgment of any physicians that are handling um, the record and that patient. So also the copying and pasting, I know that you've all seen this because I've seen this, um, is that copying and pasting really makes it easy to have these long drawn out, disjointed 20 page progress notes, okay? So it can really be quite distracting from, um, from what has occurred in the previous 24 hours. So make sure that your progress notes don't have these rambling notes that just go on um, and, are, and, and try to avoid uh, the copying and paste phenomenon. Um, and ACGME and CLEAR are, are very specific um, with regard to this training. They really want to know that your attribution of what has happened to that patient is your attribution. That's your history and physical and your physical examination um, that's documented. Um, and here's a kind of an example of what has happened previously. Um, this is a real case where um, the patient allegedly had a history of a quote PE. Um, this was interpreted by uh, clinicians that were looking at the record as a pulmonary embolism. Uh, this patient went on and had an unnecessary CT to rule out a suspected recurrence of the pulmonary embolus. Um, but really, the quote PE uh, was used uh, in the electronic note to indicate that the patient had a physical exam, not a PE. So here you can see the potential of, um, of risk where uh, this patient may have had a uh, contrast reaction, uh, or they could have had a borderline GFR um, and had um, um, a contrast-induced um, renal insult that, uh, that uh, plummeted their uh, GFR. So you, we have to be careful um, when, with copy and paste because there are some inherent hazards that can occur uh, so misconduct, um, misconduct is, uh, these are behaviors um, that uh, where a reasonable person would know that the behavior is wrong. So drug use, diversion, lying, cheating, or stealing. Um, your program directors, and this, this is uh, when we do our CCCs, uh, our uh, clinical competence committee reviews of each resident. Um, we look at all the milestones and um, professionalism is of course one of them. Um, and if there is any uh, misconduct uh, that occurs during your training, your program directors will determine whether or not um, uh, the resident should have known that the behavior was wrong. Uh, did they have the capacity to learn from their mistake? So would they have insight or remorse uh, for what has happened? Um, and do they have the ability to demonstrate proper co uh, conduct moving forward? So uh, can they learn from their mistake and move forward? Uh, the program directors will also weigh out other factors such as just how serious um, the conduct was. Did it have any kind of uh, impact or harm? Um, does it have the potential of future harm um, should that behavior occur. So all these are taken into consideration uh, with regard to misconduct. Um, and here is a Venn diagram that, that talks about, that kind of illustrates um, um, uh, professionalism uh, being at, of course, at its core. Um, and there may be instances where we have the opportunity to educate um, um, our, our residents when there are um, some gaps in professionalism. Um, it, we believe that the patient, that the resident um, uh, will learn from it, um, that they have some degree of insight or remorse, um, that the, it's a well-intentioned mistake and perhaps a miscommunication. 
Um, and it, it's possible that you may also um, have been led astray by someone who should know better. On the misconduct side, um, you know, we, we will assess whether or not a reasonable non-physician would, um, uh, would act in that way. Um, uh, is there a lack of um, insight or lack of remorse? Um, is there a lack of good intention uh, in, your, in your conduct? Um, and uh, and uh, the, an assessment of whether or not we think it will likely occur again. So again, <clears throat> there are some uh, thoughts there that professionalism cannot be taught. There are some thoughts that it can be taught. Um, we, we, we believe that there's opportunities uh, for role modeling and, and for education that can have an impact on professionalism. Um, and uh, your credibility and your reputation um, is, 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 is valuable. And so how you conduct yourself, how your, your colleagues see you, how your patients see you um, is, is vital to your success and longevity in your professions. So guard it. Uh, AOA code of conduct, I think we've all seen this, but I'm sure it's nice to see these um, uh, periodically. Uh, again, uh, our, under our code of conduct, just to highlight a few uh, that we um, uh, appropriately manage our uh, uh, potential conflicts of interest. Um, uh, we uh, exhibit uh, beneficence. Um, that we always act in the best interests of our patient and patient, uh, placing our patient's needs first, um, that we treat our patients uh, with dignity and truthfulness and honesty. As you can see, all of those um, clear highlights are in our, uh, in our code of conduct. We also have the AOA Pledge of Commitment um, that focuses on displaying integrity and professionalism uh, throughout my career, just to highlight um, a few things there. And then HCAPS, this is another area, and I alluded to this earlier, um, with regard to our, our patient's perception of how we're doing, of how we're interacting with them. So each year, um, um, every hospital um, will send out um, 300 uh, questionnaires um, and, and it goes straight to the patient. Um, and we, these are publicly reported. So our, our patients will grade us on how we're doing um, in, in various aspects of care. And there are 27 questions. Three of those questions actually are about how we as physicians, residents, fellows, um, how we are perceived by our patients in terms of our professionalism. And it asks them about how, uh, how uh, we interact with regard to respect and our listening skills and our communication uh, abilities. And so here are the questions that go to our patients. Um, how often did doctors treat you with courtesy and respect? How often did doctors listen carefully to you? And how often did your doctors explain things in a way you could understand? So <clears throat> we are um, not only graded on these, but our, our hospitals are actually, um, uh, are actually reimbursed. And so the higher our score, the higher our reimbursement. Um, but know that the patient does have a voice um, uh, in terms of uh, their perception of uh, their experience.